Oh, there ain't no rest for the wicked. Money don't grow on trees. I got miles to fill it. I got bills to pay. There ain't nothing in this world for free. All right, come do some work. Uh, oh, where'd he go? Where'd he go? Where'd Noah go? I even took notes for now. There we go. Oh, that's a clarity test. Problems. Uh, Nick. Follow up. I'm sorry, I just had it here. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> From Nick. Everything Cappy knows about cigars. Hey, Captain, you once did a video on everything you know about motorcycles, which as a fellow biker, I found very informative and insightful. As a fellow cigar smoker, too, I'm wondering how much for a similar video on everything you know about cigars. I'm taking, I'm talking everything from picking a good cigar to shop, to cigar, cigar shop etiquette, to how to cut a cigar, and anything else you think you might be helpful to a young millennial who loves cigars but knows very little about them besides how good they are. Well, this would is, this is be applying for anybody. Your age doesn't have to be anything. Um, no, it's, it's all ages. Uh, I think cigar smoking is one of the nicest, more calming, relaxing. And because let me show you how good an, uh, an economist I am. So I had to go buy two different cigars to demonstrate for this video. And you damn right. I wrote these off and my guests to get to the cigar lounge. And now I'm going to go smoke one of these later on today. Uh, but we'll leave those there for props later. Let me know the price. Thanks, Nick. All right. Well, <clears throat> so this is as much as I could come up with, uh, about smoking cigars. Uh, and this will more than cover everything you need to know about doing it. I mean, it's not that much. It's not like, uh, Oh, he left out this critical thing. So even though maybe I, I forgot one or two things on this will be more than an adequate cigar one-on-one class for you. <clears throat> and I've gone through here, uh, just, just some general stuff, and, and there's somewhat of an... All right, let's talk about your design of cigars, all right? So I have two cigars here. These two do not cover all the many and varied sizes in cigars, but there's really just, you know, what's a Churchill, what's this, what's that? Here's a standard-looking cigar. Um, you see it has a rounded end here. This is why I just call normal or straight, all right? They're going to talk about Churchill's and this and that. It doesn't matter. The shape of the cigar. Now, you, it could be longer. They could be thicker. The gauge could be thicker. But this is just your normal cigar. All right? And you cut it right off here. You light it on the flat end. You can tell because that's where the tobacco is. You do not. That's where you cut it because there's no open tobacco there. And the ring, this uh, artwork here is usually closer to the end here. Now, they shape the cigars different ways for reasons. And I'd say more important reasons than you might think. <clears throat> here's called a perfecto. All right. You'll notice it's tapered at both ends. You'll notice here at this very end, there's some exposed tobacco there. But at this end, there's not. And once again, the ring is closer to this side. This is the side you cut. You say, why do they do that, Capti? Uh, well, the reason they do this, that tapered end, is because the surface area to light here is kind of a pain. You got to hold your match there a long time. Hopefully you got one of these extended matches, but you're going to have to light it, drag on it, puff on it, get it lit, get it going. Whereas this, because the surface area is much smaller, it's very clever. It starts at a very small circumference, very small circular area. And then and as you pull air through here, it expands and lights the rest of the end of the cigar. So uh, what you're going to find out is when you're light, trying to light a cigar in wind and you don't have a torch, it's a pain in the butt keeps going out once you get this lit like in other words this is like lighting a cigarette so if you can light this as a cigarette that's a lot easier and presumably i'm going to say the main reason you go smoking is to relax you want as little grains of sand in your engine to get through it <clears throat> one of the worst things about a cigar is if the draw like i constantly have to suck on it to keep the thing lit now i'm not enjoying myself i'm not so this makes that lighting process a lot easier um, then let's revert back to the regular one because they want to blow a ton of money. They'll have at times a very flat end where it's cut here. You light it there, but this is just tor uh, tapered off into a point. That's a torpedo cut. I like those more. This is my least favorite design of a cigar, but it, that doesn't influence my decision. I'll cut it regardless. Uh, but they'll taper it off. That results in a little bit better drawing, I believe. Um, and you can kind of see they kind of did that with this one here, but that's not not really per this tapers off all the way down the road there. Usually 
the thickness stays consistent across the horizon and then tapers off here. Those torpedo cuts, I also like. Uh, but again, it's not the deciding factor for me. Um, I just like it because of the draw. Uh, so that's it. There are other types and forms and designs of cigars. Let's talk about flavors without going. <clears throat> that's more of a Robusto. That's a Connecticut. That's that's a Maduro. Oh, the, the hinty floral notes, as Adam Piggott always loves. Forget it. They They have taken it. The girls, not the women. I'm talking men who are girls. I'm not talking trans or, or uh, non-binary. I'm talking the girls. You know, your safety bunnies, like you go to the gun range, and they're all like, say, I saw over there that you had a magazine already in your gun, and that's against the rules. It's like, yeah, you know what? I'm, um, you're, you know, And it's some fat lard butt uh, who's got a two-liter thing of Mountain Dew. You're like, well, just, just go play Dungeons and Dragons, okay? Just get out of my face. <clears throat> um, there's people like that, like, it's more chocolatey, and then there's floral notes, but I hear I have a hint of hibiscus in it. Oh, my God. They're also the type to smoke flavored cigars, like grape or strawberry or chocolate or cinnamon. You do not smoke. Oh, I like cinnamon. No, no, out of the pool, out of the cigar lounge smoking. You go play with the girls. Okay, you are last for kickball. You get out of here. You do not. You don't smoke those, and you don't smoke acids, which is a brand of cigar. Oh, two dollars. That's pretty cheap. It's like smoking bark. Okay, so <clears throat> avoid those rookie moves. Anyway, here's here's the flavors. It's light, medium, and full bodied. Right. When you start out, you're usually going to want to go with a lighter one because you can get sick. It's like building yourself up to drinking or anything else. If you go with a full body one. That may be too much for your system. Also, these are very small cigars. This, is, this would be like a perfect cigar to start with. It's light, and it's not a lot of tobacco. And so you're not you know, flooding your system with a ton that it can't handle. There are very rarely bad cigars that have gone bad, that no matter what little tobacco is, the tobacco is bad, and it'll make you sick. Or you're actually just not jiving with that type of tobacco. That's very, 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 very rare. Um, and the second you start feeling a little bit queasy, stop immediately. I don't care how much of that cigar you got left to smoke. Stop immediately because it's only going to get worse for a little bit. And then about five, 10 minutes, it'll drop. Um, like the recovery period from a bad cigar is very quick, but you got to stop smoking the cigar. I knew one guy smoked a cigar, threw up, <clears throat> came back five minutes later, got himself a different one because it's out of your system that bad. But the second you're like, Ooh, set it down. Douse it, throw it away. There ain't no, it's making you sick. Don't make yourself any sicker. It's going to get worse, but it'll go away just as quickly. Um, anyway, so to avoid that, you're going to want to start with lighter cigars. Uh, my standard go-to, and even to this day, my favorite are Connecticut uh, tobacco, Connecticut wrap, and Connecticut filler because it's light. Every once in a while, I'll go with something a little bit heavier. And it's not a guarantee. Like you'll get some light cigars. You're like, this is, this is ass. This is way harsh and it could be because it wasn't kept in the humidor correctly they just had a bad batch of tobacco um but generally the this is generally the lighter the cigar the the lighter flavor the darker the cigar uh the, the more harsh though i've smoked some gurkhas which are darker wrap cigars and yeah those are full body but man they were good <clears throat> they were really good uh so we have that there let us also talk about the wrapper and fill. The cigar is made with tobacco inside the cigar and then a wrapper. The flavor is more on the wrapper. You could have to usually have two different types of tobacco. There's the filler tobacco, and then there's what they wrap it with. Uh, and that then determines the flavor. So if they're talking wrapper and filler, you're like, oh, now you know what they're talking about. And then it really doesn't matter after that because no one really, oh, that wrapper, I prefer the vintage 2016 tobacco out of, uh, out of Costa Rica. No one, no one talks that way. It's just like, do you like your cigar? But if Kay say, what's the wrapper? What's the filler? You're like, uh, the filler, uh, what's a wrapper? Uh, I don't get it. So that's what we're talking about there. Gauge, just the thicker, the, the, the wider it's gauge, this obviously has a smaller gauge than this one down here. Dude, you could get comically thick cigars. I had a cigar that was about this thick once, almost got sick on it. Um, I'm going to have a good size cigar, and that was the biggest one. Uh, but with the gauge, uh, I guess we could talk about draw now. 
the thickness of the cigar is going to determine a couple things along with its length. Uh, for example, one of my favorite cigars to smoke is a nub because it's thick. It's thicker than this, pretty thick cigar, but it's only about that long. Uh, Macanudo comes out with, I think it's called a bullet, <clears throat> but it's the same concept. It's a thick cigar, but a short cigar. So you get to drag in all that air. So you get to taste all the tobacco, uh, but it's not so much tobacco. You get sick and you're done. Okay. Also with that much more surface area with a wider gauge, the draw is easier. You can get more air in. Um, and you're going to feel, you're going to taste more of the fill than you will the wrapper. Uh, but again, I, I don't think you'll, you'll like the cigars that you don't. Uh, if you get a large gauge, but very long or a long cigar in general, and, and the gauge actually, but you get the longer your cigar, the, in theory, the longer it's going to take you to smoke. So let's say I have this a cigar this long, twice the length of the other. They got them. This first half of the cigar is going to taste pretty good and sweet. But over time, because you're dragging smoke into this, you are now flavoring this tobacco, making it harsher and harsher as you go along. So what I will do, sometimes it depends on um, how much time I got or what's available, but sometimes you'll see a cigar like that looks interesting. It's, it's really long cigar. I'm like, that looks a little, it's a little bit of much of a tobacco. What you do is you get the big cigar, you lick it in the middle. The reason you lick it in the middle is to moisten the uh, wrapper. And then you get a cutter, which I'll show you here. <clears throat> and you cut it in the middle and you smoke one half, one time, the other half, the other time. Some purists say, oh, no, you're destroying the cigar. Shut up. It's my cigar. Uh, and what that does is it keeps the flavor of the cigar that you can enjoy twice instead of having one big long one when you have probably more tobacco than you want, more uh, nicotine. You're going to get less jittery, and uh, then the smoke doesn't ruin uh, that cigar. So that's just a little trick. But just keep in mind, if you see a big, even just a long cigar, the later half of that cigar, certainly the last bit of the cigar is going to get harsh. And that's usually when you stop smoking. Like some cigars are so well designed, they have like a little pin. You can poke at the very end, you're just smoking off of the nub there uh, because all of it's really good. But usually by the time you're getting down, you'll remove the, uh, you'll remove the wrapper um, or the band. Uh, that's about as far as you want to smoke it. So you go a little bit past the band that's the general, but you smoke it until you don't want to smoke it no more. And once it starts getting harsh, once, once it starts becoming a relaxing experience and it, it now becomes a chore, put the thing down and relax because that's, that's the point of a cigar. Uh, <clears throat> um, so we talked about that. We talked about that full body gauge, uh, cutting. All right, let's talk about cutting. Um, the cut is basically to allow for you to draw air to keep the end of the cigar lit and to get enough smoke in your mouth so you can you can flavor it. Now, this is, I'll put this here. This is not a torpedo cut. This is a perfecto. Uh, it still has that round end. But a torpedo cut would have like both ends tapered. <clears throat> and so what you, you have a couple cutting options. You can have a straight cut, a V cut, and a punch. Now, this is a straight cut. This is just a standard. It's like a guillotine. You'll notice if I change the angle there, the blade is straight. It is not bent. In other words, it's flat this way. So you're going to get a flat cut on this. Now that's all right. If you want to just, you just you cut it off. You would cut it at about here. I might as well cut it now because I am going to smoke it later. All right. And that goes flying around. Then women are like, why is there tobacco all over the house? Oh my God. <laughs> you know, like what? This banding staying on, so I'll take that off. Leave it there. So now you see it's cut. It's cut cleaner than if you use the scissors. Um, you do want to spend the. Sometimes they give these away at cigar lounges for free, but just give yourself a good cutter. Now that's a straight cut. Now, if you think about the math, that's flat, and so there's that much surface area to drag uh, smoke through. Now that's fine. This is a small cigar, and you'll probably keep this end lit pretty easy. But let's say you got this uh, cigar here, all right? It's a little bit bigger, a little bit more surface area. And you could certainly go further further down this uh, cigar to cut it to get a wider thing. But sometimes you don't want it, you don't want to like suck on it like something else that some people do to get through college. <laughs> 
So they come up with these things called V cuts. And I don't have V cuts. I don't, I'm sorry. I don't have a V cut here. It's no different than this thing, but the blade in here is, is bent to form a V so that it doesn't cut flat, but rather it cuts a V in here like this. It cuts in and out like that. So it gets more surface area for you to draw in because it's going in and out. So there's, you have more surface area to get the air through. And you don't want to be like, because <laughs> you got some little dinky hole in your cigar. And it's uh, now a lot of times there could also be a, a knot in the cigar holding it down. So again, you got to, you don't want to just crack down on the cigar. You got to moisten it either with spit or water. Let's sit for a second. And then you got to pinch it a little bit or make your, your hole bigger because you don't want to be fighting a knot. Sometimes so a knot can ruin it. If a knot's right here in your cigar, well, I guess you got a bad cigar. And usually a good uh, tobacconist or cigar launch place will replace it. So no, I'm sorry. Because these don't come out perfect. No one bats a thousand. I'll see that. And then you got a punch. Now here is a cigar lighter. We're going to talk about lighters again. And if you point this up, you'll see a little thing come up, a little hole there. And that's kind of razor sharp, so be careful. But what this does is it allows for a punch. And so I'd use this for, for that. And you just take this, you push it on the thing there. Well, maybe that's not going through. There we go. There we go. And now you have a perfect hole punched in there, although you probably want to get rid of that. Get rid of that. I brought my pencil. Give me something to write on, man. It's another old joke from 1984. None of you guys would get. I got it bad, got it bad, got it bad. I'm off of the teacher. Oh, I got it bad. So, yeah. Uh, so, those are your three main cuts. <clears throat> and, um, you, we'll talk about lighters later, but it's always good to get a lighter like this, uh, and I'll go over why. But if you can get a, a punch in there, it's on the other side. By the way, make sure you're pressing down the right button because I've torched myself the wrong way. I had a perfect V-shaped burn that blistered immediately because these are very hot. So we have that there. <clears throat> um, Straight cutting video. All right, lighting. So now I can't light it in here because I'm in an apartment that I don't have the right to uh, smoke in, but I'm going to more or less show you how to do it. You have a couple ways you can light your cigar. There are matches, all right? That's perfectly fine. Some people wait for the sulfur to burn off so you don't get the sulfur taste. Some people like the sulfur taste. There are longer matches that are purposely designed to light a cigar because um, they'll be like, you know, like three inches long. You light it, and so you just sit there and you – it gives you enough time to burn because this is going to take a longer time to fully light this surface area. Whereas this thing, you can hit it like a cigarette and be done. Uh, you have regular lighters, which I don't advise because they're kicking up gas. They are blown out just like matches uh, out in wind. So like you're out boating or you're out golfing, you're just outdoors having a good time. Uh, it's very hard to light. You know, I, I have cigars when I'm hiking mountains. Well, there's wind up there. So that's why I got myself a torch. So I kind of advise against regular lighters. You're always doing this thing. You're trying to hide behind a tree or something like that. Uh, but, you know, it'll work and the, the gas flavor will go away quickly. Uh, there's cedar sticks where a lot of people are purists. They don't want any sulfur. They don't want any gas. They don't want any butane smell. So what they'll first do is they'll light a cedar stick. And what you'll do is you'll find at cigar lounges, they'll break apart cigar boxes because there's like, planks of cedar and little thin pieces of cedar and you could take that light it with something let it burn and then you have cedar lighting your cigar and uh they cut them about this long well, i mean about that long so you have plenty of time for it to to burn <clears throat> and if i have the time i'll do that uh, if it's available but the standard one i don't know for 15 bucks through cappy's amazon affiliate program olderbrother.com slash donate you'll find the link there you get yourself a torch. This, unless it's a tornado, it's not going to be blown out. Yeah, it's kind of a pain in the butt. You got to put butane in that little black hole there. Um, but all you do is you point it. Eh, I don't know about this thing. You don't want to do it this way because then you're not, you're unlikely to burn your hands, though it can happen, but you're going to torch the uh, filler. I'm sorry, the wrapper. And now you've ruined the flavor. So you want to kind of put it at an angle like that. Uh, then you also want to take a puff on it 
while you're lighting it. And you just, and you're not, <laughs> rule number one about smoking cigars, you don't inhale. You're not Bill Clinton, okay? You use your cheeks to get some suction like that. And then as you're lighting it, you're sucking in the heat, you're lighting that part, and then you also rotate. Not immediately. I had, I think it was TJ Martin now, someone like this. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You can hold it for a little bit. It would look like this. After you do that, it should be lit. Might have to do another go at it. And a way you could tell is you take a look at the <clears throat> this side of the cigar and you blow on it. And depending on how thorough and good you were the first time, you'll see it'll light up orange where you're blowing out. That's lit. And there will be dark where it's only charred. And that's not lit. And you want it to be universally lit all the way around. When you blow on it, you want to see the, all that as an orange circle. And what that means is it's going to, in theory, draw and burn consistently down. Now, that's not going to be so much a function of the lighting as to how consistently they pack the tobacco, some poorly packed cigars. Like you'll light it perfectly, but then all of a sudden this top part here, I'll do this. Sorry, this top part here is burnt and this is not <laughs> burned at all. And uh, some guys like that because then they can hold it and the ash stays on top. Uh, but that's a poorly packed cigar. Uh, but first, make sure it's not your fault and light it correctly like that. Uh, that's it. Okay. <clears throat> Smoking. When you light this, that's called the cherry, wherever the burning is, it's like the red hot cherry. And so the first, once you start it out here, it's exposed to the elements. You gotta, you gotta wait and you keep it lit. You keep it going. And it's soon enough, the cherry will burn down here and the remainder of this will be ash. This will insulate the cherry from other factors outside. And this is about the best part of the cigar because it maintains its flavor. You don't have to constantly hustle at it, work at it. And you just go ahead and you smoke it. Now, over time, what's going to happen is this is all going to turn to ash and it will no longer be able to sustain itself and it will inevitably fall off or blow off or you'll bump or something and then there'll be ash all over the place. Everybody ashes in the wrong place, right? But ideally, you pay attention to your cigar. You make sure the ash is not too long. Once it gets a little long, then you just ash it in the ashtray or outside or whatever. A way to keep the ash on longer is to hold it up like this. But another way is just to buy a good cigar that has is known for keeping a good ash. And nubs and obviously thicker uh, with larger gauge cigars are, are known for that. And now you are going to have to ash. It will fall off. And now it's re-exposed. That's just a good another time as to relight it. Now, remember, because you're drawing it in, the air is going this way. So you're going to get a vortex. It's going to burn like a V. Okay. And you're going to have to light it immediately, probably around again. And you're going to have to work on getting the cherry up again. And once you get the cherry up again, cool. And that's kind of the, the maintenance of the cigar. If it goes out because <clears throat> you were talking too long or what? sometimes cigars don't last long. My favorite cigar, which we'll talk about later, one light. You can go to the bathroom. You can run a, a marathon, come back. It's still lit. But usually they're going to go out. Uh, and so now you have to think science. Everything in that vortex, that, that cone going into the cigar here has been charred and burned. And where the fire was is out. So a lot of people take their cigarette lighter and, say, and then they'll try and light ash. Ash doesn't ignite. It's already been burned. So what you need to do is you take a uh, match, what I've found is the best way, and you drill out all the old ash. All right. That's right. This is going to become all messed up. That's okay. It'll become frayed. That's all right. All right. Then once you get most of the ash out and it's tobacco again, and it should be dry, then you relight. That light's a lot easier. Um, and uh, <clears throat> you're allowed to continue to enjoy your cigar. Uh, don't ash on your dick. That's another thing. Okay. Just in case you were wondering. Uh, I talked about that. Oh. Uh, let's talk about the actual art of smoking. Then we'll talk about smoking in car. Again, you'd never inhale. Um, my dad, I would get him a cigar for his birthday or whatever. <clears throat> once, a, once a year. And then like three or four years later, my, uh, sister or somebody told me, you know, he doesn't smoke though. So I'm like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, Oh no, he had one. And he got sick. And I was like, did you, did you inhale it? 
He's like, well, I got sick. I'm like, because he used to smoke cigarettes. I'm like, you don't inhale cigars it's for the flavor. You will get sick immediately. First puff, sucking it into your lungs. So for you cigarette smokers, it is not a cigarette. It is a cigar. It's like a pipe. You just bring it into your mouth. You don't have to blow it out immediately. Some people like the smoke to stay in there and then you just, whew. all right. Some people F around with the smoke. I don't know. And some people can blow rings. I can't do that. But I just, you know, you take the thing. Um, oh, and then finally smoking in the car. You, you can smoke in a lounge. That's great. There's really nothing to it. <clears throat> smoke in the car. Crack the window next to you. Do not crack any other windows. Drive around. One of the more pleasurable experiences is driving around in your car having a cigar. And the wind will just take it. If, if you're right, uh, all in your left hand, your right hand, I'd shift. So naturally would smoke with my left. It'll just pull everything out of the out of the car. Uh, people in your car. Ooh, that smells that. I've never had anyone complain about cigar smoke. People complain about cigarette smoke. No one's ever complained about my cigar smoke in my car anyway. Like, oh, that smells nice. You get old ladies. You remind me of my uncle. He smoked. It was wonderful. It reminded me of when I was three. We'll get that. Just hold on to the Super Chats, guys. I'll, I'll get there in a second. <clears throat> so uh, that is I, I one of the more pleasant experiences driving cross-country with cigars. Just have a cigar, throw up some podcasts, and tune into it. Okay, etiquette. There's not a lot of etiquette because cigar smokers are pretty cool dudes, and you're all stuck in the same smoky room, so it's not. But even if they're not, even if they are a smoker, smoker or not, it is rude, depending on how the wind is blowing outside or in the room because there should be a ventilation system. Smoke's going to drag one way. You want to smoke downwind from them so you're not puffing on a cigar and your smoke travels right to their face, even if they are a smoker. <clears throat> if you're all sitting around, everything's taken care of, you put your hand down so that the smoke drags towards no one's face. So you put your hand over here. You smoke with a different hand. All right? You put your arm over here. Make sure the smoke is not going into anyone's face, smoker or not. So that's one thing. Um. If you go to a bar or someplace outside or something like that, always ask if they they say smoking aloud, which is rare, of course, obviously. That doesn't mean cigars. Ask, can I light a cigar? All right. Also, with cigars, you want to avoid the Karens. Okay. And, and it's just this is one of choosing your battles. You're there to relax and enjoy a cigar. So even if they say, yeah, we love cigars that you smoke, and then there's like a family behind you and it's dra uh, drifting into there, yeah, move. Or go smoke by the lake or go smoke at a picnic table or something like that. All right. Kind of position yourself at the bar or wherever it is that you are that you're not bothering anyone. Um, what else? Oh, cigar lounge etiquette. Uh, if you live locally, you want to start smoking at a cigar lounge. It's like a club. And the entrance fee is you shutting up long enough to prove you're not an asshole. Okay, just just be polite. Be so, don't try and be funny. Don't try and impress the guys. Wait for the just like anything else. Take the opportune time to make a very well placed joke, a very tasteful joke. Somebody, you know, you'll warm up to other people fast enough. And then you can pick on those guys a little bit. Uh, but that's kind of every cigar lounge, unless it's like in a tourist district like Vegas. Every cigar lounge kind of has it's their own club. <clears throat> where the old timers go. And these guys, some of them have been there. The, the one I go to, these guys have been there for 25 years. All right. You just, you know, people have died uh, at the cigar lounge. They've been going there for so long. The one that I go to anyway. And it took me, you know, about a year. Cause I'd, I'd stop there when I was teaching dance classes and I would just use that to wait for traffic to die down. And, and then you get to know the guys. It's like a bar or anything like that. But um, yeah, just go in there and, uh, you know, don't be a douche. Uh, and that's really all there is for uh, etiquette. I guess about the other thing is like when you go into a cigar lounge, there's going to be a humidor. They got to keep cigars humid. So you walk in it kind of like it's a quasi fridge. It's just It's humid in there. Don't leave the door open. Don't light a cigar and bring it into the cigar. That's the quickest way to ruin all the cigars. They'll get pissed. Close the door. Um, do that. 
Now, some cigar lounges in the humidor, they're going to have shelves of cigars up that you can't see, and they'll have like a little step ladder. Uh, and me being a short guy, oh, what's up there? So I will get the step ladder. Nine out of 10 times, they're okay with that. Every once in a while, though, someone said, can I help you, sir? I'm like, yeah, I'm just looking for a cigar. I'm like, well, you can't be up there. Then you get down and you leave. The second you have these safety Nazis, the second you have these safety bunnies or just these tyrants, you don't want to give that person your money. There was one gal <clears throat> that would lecture about politics. She was the, she was the, the staff. She's the clerk. She's just the checkout gal. She didn't own the place. She was lecturing about politics and this and that. And I, I ripped into her and uh, I was not invited back to that cigar lounge, but that's fine. Cause I wasn't going back anyway. <laughs> Because you're not there to hear some 23-year-old master's student lecture you about politics. You're there to relax. Um, and so that, but etiquette, you know, make sure you like the place you're going to. Uh, and then if they got some, yep. And that'll happen. Sometimes they, oh, there's a girl here. She has boobies. Let's ruin it all for everybody because she's going to yap. And, and it's just like, no, get it. So like if it was younger, you'll see that like, at touristy clubs, touristy lounges, where it's not the regular guys. Oh, yeah, they got babes, and they know their stuff. That's You'll see that more commonly in Vegas. Uh, but in, in your local cigar lounge in a major metro or the burbs, be real wary if they got a gal yapping because uh, then you're kind of like, eh, yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure about that. But you, you don't have to stick around. So there's all that. Oh, let's talk about culture. <clears throat> culture. Most of the guys who smoke cigars and certainly at cigar lounges are all old. They're all, I wouldn't say necessarily wealthy, but wealthier than the average person. They're, they're well-to-do. Um, all intelligent and all very interesting and unique. Uh, I know one place where there is, what, a former police chief, an FBI agent. A lot of vets go there, too. Um, an equestrian. Not the, ooh, the hussy. He was an actual equestrian. What else do we got? Oh, there was a reverend, an author that I'm I'm not the author. There's another author there. I mean, just, you know, this one guy worked on the oil fields back in the 70s and the 80s. He's old. Um, That's, you're going to run into some really interesting characters and in cats smoking a cigar. Um, and, and it's kind of a, a filtering, like, it depends on your taxes. It's not, it's, it's cheaper to get into golf than it is cigars, depending on how, I mean, I know these guys go one a day. Um, and you're talking, depending on taxes, a cheap cigar is like 10 bucks now, but other places you could find them cheaper than that and not different depending on your state. But if you got to fork over $10 for a cheap one, let alone 20 for a good one and 30 for a great one. And yeah, price does correlate with quality. Uh, you're not having dude bros walking in with their lease beamers. You're not having, uh, uh, the trailer trash or the ghetto trash coming in, uh, you know, with their wife beater shirt and their pants down around their, their knees. Uh, it, it's kind of, I wouldn't say it's a gentleman's club, but you're not gonna, but you wouldn't be smoking cigars anyway. And the price kind of, I think it keeps the riffraff out, but there's a, there's an investment cost. There's a little bit of a hurdle. And so, uh, you're going to have people that have done rather well. That's right. There's a real cowboy retired real cowboys in the other one. Uh, you're going to get some real men in there and, uh, the posers don't stick around to it. Cause again, there's a lot of cops, <laughs> a lot of cops. Um, uh, Oh, and also very few women, very few women. Uh, not that they're against women. Sometimes women come in. There's a cup. There's occasionally a gal that hangs it. Sometimes the wives come in very cool, very nice ladies, but it's vast majority men, vast majority men. Again, at some of the nightclub ones, there's going to be ladies uh, coming in, but this is, it is a men's club. And if any women are interested in meeting, let me see, what did I say? Relatively well off, if not rich interesting, well-to-do middle-aged men who, who have careers in profession. If any of you girls would like to meet some interesting, like where have all the good men gone? I suggest maybe you ladies pick up smoking cigars, not cigarettes, cigars. You don't even have to 
look, ladies, all you got to do is go in there and buy a cigar that you're not going to smoke anyway, and then and then talk to the boys, okay? And look, here's another thing. Look pretty. That's the other thing. <clears throat> these, these guys are old enough. They, they know. A lot of them have been divorced. Like, nope, never again. You got to be a classy gal. You got to be an interesting gal because they have more interesting things to talk about. You can't just be a cute set of boobs walking in. And like, hi, my name's Tina. They're like, oh, hi, Tina. How are you? And then you'll be like, okay, bye. Uh, but if you're a classy gal, um, and just for the for the sake of smoking cigars yourself, you ladies might like it too. You might find it relaxing and, and interesting. Certainly worth a shot. I mean, just, just try. I think everybody should go have a cigar at least once just to see if they like it. But if you're if you're more of a cultured gal and you're looking for a cultured guy, um, you you could you could fish in worse ponds than a cigar lounge. Um, then what else? Uh, culture, it's not there's not much to it. It's just an old laid back community where guys chill out and relax. Um, it's not a popularity contest. Don't go in there trying to impress people. We had a guy do that one time. He got kicked out. We didn't get kicked out, but no one talked to him anymore. <clears throat> um, geography. Let's talk about geography in terms of the culture. There's Florida, and then there's everywhere else. Okay, uh, Florida has the best cigar culture in the United States, arguably the world. I love the Tampa area, but it's pretty thorough throughout the entire uh, southern part of Florida, not so much the panhandle. But you can go, and it's it's part of the Latino culture. It's part of the American culture. It's part of the retirement culture. It's part of the salsa dancing culture. So there's a little bit, you know, a cigar lounge in Miami is going to have a heck of a lot more going on than the one in Sioux Falls. The one in Sioux Falls is nice, though, by the way. Don't get me wrong. But that's more your cognac, scotch, smoking, drinking type of cattle baron type of thing. That's more. You go down to Florida, and it's like you can have a cigar in one hand, a booze in the same hand, but then you're dancing with one hand with the Latina gal doing, uh, I don't know, cha-cha or merengue. Well, merengue, you, eh, you could probably do that. Waddling would spill your drink, but you, you could smoke while dancing. I know that much for sure. Um, That, if you, if you really like cigars already, but you haven't been to Florida, you got to go to Florida. I would book a flight down to Tampa. I'd hit Ybor City, and then I'd hit Central Cigars, in Tampa, Florida, and I'm sorry, St. Petersburg, but you have to hit Ybor City. <clears throat> there are other places I'm sure some people have more familiar with Florida. I uh, might know that. Um, there's other places, but I really, if you want to go to why I consider the Mecca of smoking and to be Ybor City, then make it to Fusion Cigars in Clearwater and Central Cigars in um, St. Petersburg. And you'll see more of the outdoor culture. You get a hat and you feel in place. There's that there. No, not Florida. The rest of the Florida, eh, it's pretty standard. It's going to be, if they allow, if they have a liquor license, there'll be scotches and boozes. Um, it'll be laid back place where a bunch of old guys go hang out. <clears throat> some are fancy. There are some higher end ones. The one in Sioux Falls is actually quite fancy. I'm like, oh, I'm surprised Sioux Falls has this. But then they're more like kind of down and dirty ones. They're just like bars, like a dive bar. There's a, a dive cigar lounge. Um, an old place I used to go, like that was like the place. The nice part of it, there'll be a club, like you can join their membership club and you get a little locker and you can go hang out there and play poker with the guys. I've never done that because I frankly couldn't afford it. Um, but I kind of like the dive bar uh, environment than the fancy one. Though, one of my favorite cigar lounges in the world is very fancy. It's over in Vegas and that's kind of a more posh one, but for different reasons. Uh, so there's that. Um, oh, and then finally, I know this does talking of cigar culture. Cuban cigars suck. Okay. <clears throat> Somebody says, dude, I got some Cubans. Okay. I'm glad you traveled overseas. I'm glad you thought you got some great cigars or you snuck them into the country. I don't know what the status is. There is no reason to smoke a Cuban cigar. A very quick history lesson in, in communism, boys and girls. Castro thought he knew better than everybody, including the very fine tobacconists of Cuba pre-Castro. Among with rum, it's eerie how they follow rum, sugarcane, and tobacco, the same thing. And so Castro says, I know more about rum and I know more about cigars 
and we're taking over Bacardi and whatever the tobacco plants are. And now you guys, so Bacardi went, I think, to Bermuda, where they still don't have any taxes. And the tobacconists just took their seats and screw it. We're going elsewhere. And in the 50 years, 60 years of time, since that has happened, gosh, maybe even 70, 50, 60 years of time, uh, there's been some changes in agricultural technology and botany. And there's just been good tobacconists who mix seeds, uh, hybrid stuff together, and they, and they try and they experiment. And the <clears throat> cigars now coming out of multiple countries, uh, a lot of countries in Central America, everything from Panama, Costa Rica, Honduras, Nicaragua, they got some great tobacco. Um, the islands, uh, Dominican, uh, Costa, no, Costa Rica is a land. What's the world? Dominican Republic. What else is uh, Bahamas? I think there's another one. Jamaica might have, yeah. Uh, but oddly enough, Connecticut, Connecticut of all pl places got some pretty good tobacco. Uh, and so while communist Cuba stayed stuck in 1962, uh, we got the best cigars everywhere and uh, didn't improve. A lot of tobacconists have, a lot of uh, farms and plantations have. <clears throat> well, you could get some great, and, and I had Cubans, like real ones, they're not that great. They're just not that great. Uh, I could get you a cheap $4 knockoff. That's a hell of a lot better than a Cuban. And so Cubans are, look at a Cuban, good for you. You're, you're dating the fat chicks of the cigar world. The old wash it up has been fat chick of the cigar world. Great, you got Cubans. <clears throat> it's a Cohiba. So I won't bother with that. And then finally, let's go with my favorite cigars. All right. Um, I like this one. This is, uh, what is this one? This is a Gloria Cubana. It's got the gal on it. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, they come in different shapes and sizes. They were really good about two, three years ago. They've kind of gone downhill a little bit. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just picking the wrong cigar. Uh, I also like a nub, Kinetic. Connecticut nubs, sometimes the Cameroon. Um, and what's great with the nubs is if you get them in their little case, uh, you could put quarters in your little case. They get you get a little thing you can, you know, like a cigar holder, and I don't know, you could put you know, silver coins in them or something like that. <clears throat> um, you also give them the nieces because then they're like, ah, something to play with. Uh, Cusano CC, this is a knockoff of Cohibas that they make better than Cohibas. Uh, Cusano CC, it's a gold, yellow, black, and white. Uh, wrapper ring this thing uh and then my all-time favorite cigar is the cusano m1 all right <clears throat> you will probably not find these at cigar lounges you have to go to a tobacconist and not all tobacconists have them but i know where my tobacco my kuwaiti guy in the twin cities and i got a guy on the north side in vegas that i gotta drive all the way to to get them but they're worth and the reason why i love the cusano m1s the most <clears throat> they have the best flavor their torpedo cut. The draw is amazing and easy. You light it once, it stays lit. It is the most relaxing, tasty, easy cigar ever. It's like the woman that has a degree in engineering, no student loans. Parents are still married. She loves her dad. She has no student debt. She owns her own house. And she's a libertarian and shoots guns on top of it. That is the Cusano M1. Right, that is that is the king of cigars, in my humble opinion. Thousands out there, thousands. Uh, but if you want to start, uh, go look around. Call up your tobacconists, not your cigar lounge. You could call your cigar lounges too. You're going to pay more over there because they got to cover, you know, uh, staff and and rent and all that other stuff. <clears throat> but I would say the Cusano M1 is a great place to start. I think you just find those online. Although I don't know if you want to order a gross of them. I'll have to do that. And that's it. All right, let's get to the super chats. Dan Hunsacker for 1099, part of the 1099 superior race. Thanks for the cigars 101. Still drinking the schnapps. Nah, I had enough of the schnapps like eh, two, three, four days ago. Any mixers you add to cut it in? No. Uh, no, if I'm going to have booze, I have it untainted. With, I don't even put ice in it. I don't know why people put ice in things. Uh, but if you're going to drink with a cigar, usually your scotches and bourbons. What you also might want to drink with it is I drink Diet Coke. Some people do root beer, but it's got sugar. Diet Coke cleans your or Pepsi. It cleanses your palate so you can enjoy the cigar. You don't want to be drinking fruity drinks with your cigar. 
Water doesn't do anything either. You need to have like a, was that a coca or something like that? Juan Cabrera for two bucks. Top five cigars for beginners and drinks to go with. Uh, like I said, I just went through the cigars there. Uh, but the drinks, it if you want, if you're a bourbon or a scotch guy, yeah, have a bourbon or a scotch or a whiskey. It does. It, it's all the same. It goes well with that. In the old days, we take Dutch Masters and soak them in Jim Beam and let them dry out uh, because they're so horrible. <laughs> but it did give them some flavor. But I don't. If you like a cigar. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily pair it with a drink. If you don't drink, use Diet Coke. Diet Coke is fine for that. McCoy for five bucks. Onion on uh, opinion on pipes and not inhaling like Bill Clinton. Well, you don't inhale with pipes or cigars. I have not smoked pipes. You got to talk to Atham or TJ. You know, throw TJ a couple bucks. I'm sure he'd be more than happy to tell you about pipes. I know they're also very relaxing. I like their aroma more. They smell better. I just haven't gotten into it. And they're a little bit more maintenance. You got to clean them and all that, but it's not all that. You could gesture better with them. You can you could take a drag from a pipe like this. I like what you're thinking there, Joan. So you could point with a cigar. All you could do is really good idea. You could point with those two figures. Good idea. Make that happen. Not quite as refined or posh as turning your pipe around. I like your thinking, Joan. Is that it for the super chats? <clears throat> I'll check the archive, make sure I didn't miss any because I know I went a little long here. Game Smithy, can you recommend a cigar lounge near Mesquite, Nevada? No, that town is not that big. So if it has a cigar lounge, it's going to be the only one in town. Uh, so you may have to go with a tobacconist. And then otherwise, the, your next best bet would be to Search uh, St. George, Utah. They might have a tobacco lounge. I don't know about it, uh, but I'd search for a tobacco lounge there. Otherwise, yeah, the closest lounge you're going to have is in Vegas because, I mean, there's nothing out there. There's, there's nothing. Um, Mesquite, you might have because a lot of old retired people go there during winter. You might have one. Cigar lounges might have one. I, I'm sorry, the casinos might have one, but... Yeah, Mesquite. The only reason I stop in, I know of Mesquite is because they got a uh, a Mavericks there. I get my gas and uh, a Bahama Mama hot dog because those are the best uh, when I'm on my way up to Utah. F.O. Freeman, two bucks. Better with rumplements or beer? Beer. Oh, you don't want any sugar. No sugar with your cigars. Nope. You don't want anything sweet with your cigars. It's just it. No. Mm -mm. And even beer, if it's too sweet, you don't you don't want a you don't want a beer. Again, your bourbons, your whiskeys, your scotches, or a root beer, a diet Dr Pepper, diet root beer, diet Coke, diet Pepsi. <clears throat> All right, let me take a look. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Come on, computer. I get them all stream everything you need to know there's con there's dan oh yeah cool i got them all all right we're good to go here guys all right that's it <clears throat> questions answers go to aoconsulting.com we'll see you guys later toodles